Right, okay, I'm going to ra- run you through what we see at Gudum Padang. Uh, we come on here to the first terrace, and um, there is a series of uh, uh, rock structures, stone settings, uh, and over here you can see the rock mound, which we'll come to. It's a nice stone setting here uh, with a, uh, an altar in it. skew there. You can see the floor is actually set with andesite blocks. There's like an altar like area there. Uh, And uh, so this is the rock mound and there's an exit here and uh, this defines the uh, the the axis this line here um, and the rock mound to our right which you can see here um, and that axis points towards the Gede Peak, which is over there somewhere, but sadly uh, we can't see it. But we saw it earlier on today. Um, and um, we will go up onto the next level. Now, you can see how the andesite blocks are. Uh, placed they're like they're placed like logs like a uh, a pile of logs a log pile so we'll walk up here and see how tightly packed they are There's a couple sticking out the wall here, which might be for strengthening regions, according to Danny Hillman. There's some sticking out up here. Uh, I personally feel that there's a reason for this. Um, Particularly as the one sticking out are directly above it. And we'll now go up onto the second terrace. where we will find what's known as the crown that's the correct term Um, the rock mound has a name as well it's basically sort of like a place of prayer but this is the the rock mound here right by this tree and I'll show you what it looks like over here Okay, this is looking down on Terrace 1. And somewhere behind the rock mound, uh, in the 9 metre wall behind it that brings us from Terrace 1 to Terrace 2, is possibly the entrance into an underground structure, uh, a structure which uh, uh, could be natural or could be an artificial uh, chamber uh, and it's somewhere beneath this rock pile uh, could be a mixture of bugs in all honesty so we're on Terrace 2 now and we're going to climb up now notice that a lot of these stones have got holes in them like this like these um, so-called cut marks whether they're natural or not we're not sure but there's lots of different white marks like this uh, there's a long one there look at this stone here this one here clearly marking the uh, the ascent huge great andesite block here as so we go up the stairs and now reach terrace three Okay, now there's a stone to see here, which uh, apparently is known as the mark of the tiger. Uh, The tiger is a very important symbol to the West Javans. It's almost like their sort of regional symbol. Uh, Here is the uh, mark of the tiger. However, whether this is natural or 
not is another matter we're not sure and as we now climb we go from terrace three to just a sweep round to show you what's here this much smaller step we go up to level four uh, and according to the accounts this uh, enclosure here is the p place of strength uh, and formerly there was a large like rocking stone here which people would try to pick up um, as if they had to prove something here uh, however that stone has now been removed for safety purposes because too, be, too many people were messing about with it uh, and now you can see the bank that marks the the climb to level five sorry to terrace five I should say and so we climb up here and we come to what's known as the throne and it said that uh, this is where the king would stand or sit or whatever and notice right at the back of it there is a stone that is lying at an angle and look at the circle in it uh, that seems to be deliberate to me let's see what we can see now as we look back uh, down terraces two four uh, five four three and two behind us uh, this is the axial alignment and um, for me the throne is the place where I most like to me this is the place of meditation uh, and it said that to the left of the king stood his queen so that's somewhere where this stone here is in the center other stories report that his high priest stood on the other side which is the east side over towards that direction and behind that we have three places in a line uh, we have on the left here a pile of stones that apparently represents the ancestral mother uh, now associated with Eve on the right we have a uh, small stone structure which is rectilinear uh, floor level um, which represents like the primordial man or the first man that's associated with Adam so we have an Adam and Eve situation and between them is what's known as the stone of prayer the stone of prayer is uh, the, obviously the coming together of these forces um, the past and the present you know the male and the female the joining of these energies and once again it seems to have some kind of mark upon it which you can see here now again whether this is uh, natural or man-made we can't say um, and what we do know though is that people still come up here today to pray and meditate local people and so private is what uh, you know is what they do that um, even though we asked them if we could take part we come up with them they declined uh, that and said that no they, they could got to do it on their own so you know that there, there is there's things here the other thing is that the number five is very important obviously there there are five terraces um, there's supposedly five places on terrace five the king the queen um, the adam and the eve and the stone of prayer uh, the place of the high priest is not included um, and apparently there are holy men the spirit of holy men who were once here guarding one each of the terraces so the spirits or souls five holy men remain here and the main focus of everything is the surrounding landscape the ritual landscape which you can't see much of today you can see various uh, um, hills mountains around us and it said that there are five uh, mountains or hills that immediately surround the place one of which um, is in the direction of uh, Gede and Pangrango which are the the two peaks of the Stratorokite volcano which is in front of us 
and um, what's interesting also is that there are five hills that stretch in the direction of the two peaks of the Strato volcano. Uh, the last two of those five being Gede and the last being Pang Grango. So five is here in four different ways within the amount of terraces, the amount of holy men that guard the different terraces, the amount of hills that surround the site and in the amount of hills that stretch towards the horizon, towards the north-northwest, which is the orientation of this place. Um, and so there is like a, a spiritual matrix here, uh, something which seems to have been uh, preserved in part by local people, the local guardians, uh, and what we've been gradually learning over the past uh, uh, two days. Uh, so that's that's Gudung Padang uh, in a nutshell um, and uh, uh, we're staying up here the sunset has uh, probably just about happened and uh, we're gonna remain up here for a little bit uh, to do a little meditation um, and to see what uh, comes to us uh, the other thing is is that there's quite a lot of magnetic anomalies here uh, and that uh, they seem to relate to uh, underground water sources here and also possibly hauntings there are a number of different hauntings uh, uh, connected with this site uh, including some very very strange photographs uh, which we were which we've been shown there's a gentleman here using the uh, uh, the, the throne for meditation now uh, and his friend over there so that's it so from five we go down to four we cross through four to go into down here into three and there's one of the recent archaeological digs that have been here. A gentleman uh, praying. And we cross now down three into two. And two takes us towards the crown. and we'll just climb the crown one more time and here's the view once more this is Gudung Padang and uh, obviously we've been very privileged to be here uh, the past couple of days and um, we hope that this gives you a little idea of what the place looks like.